exactly is object oriented programming when i google this term all the links i get they talk about terms like abstraction inheritance polymorphism even when i talk to students and programmers they talk about the same terms so let me make the record straight and clear these are these terms are not object oriented programming yes you have heard it right these terms are not object oriented programming they are by products of object oriented programming and we need to tell this to the people who are learning object oriented programming so that they can learn it in a better way and they can create objects in a better way in their code now you might be wondering that you know whatever i am saying has no basis let me give you that before we can understand object oriented programming we need to go back and understand why object oriented programming was needed but even before that we also need to understand how we used to write our code or even today how we write our code take any code from anywhere on the internet each and every code has only two things data and functions which touch some operations on the data which means that if i am having a sum function i provide two variables which takes these two variables sum it and returns the result to me so all the code which we have written till date or we are going to write in future will only and only have two things data and some functions or actions which will be performed on that data before object oriented programming became mainstream we used to code in languages like c and we called it as procedural programming which means that we can write or create data or functions in hundreds and thousands of lines in multiple files things were okay as long as the size of the code is small but as the size of program and the complexity of program started growing people felt that there is a need to make sure that if we can segregate data and functions in such a way where the functions which will be working on the data can be grouped together the earliest attempt to do so is by making sure that uh, there will be a separate file which will have these data and functions but there is no way to prevent these data and functions to be used by other files right so it all depends upon the individual programmer's ability and creativity to segregate things so that it is maintainable as well as understandable by the people so this was the problem with procedural programming about which people were contemplating how to solve it now let's talk about object in object oriented programming what is an object anything in this world which you can uniquely identify is an object me you laptop camera lights piece of paper maps bicycle human animals kids anything you can identify you can uniquely identify is an object so why people thought about object oriented programming because if you can group together a piece of data as well as functions in a way where you can uniquely identify it by a name then it can be called as a object oriented programming because we are trying to separate things out in a code base which has grown exponentially since the moment it was created so the idea of object oriented programming is to group together some amount of data as well as functions so that you can uniquely give them a name we all taught about things like you know class employee class shape what it does it uniquely identifies a set of data and functions so you can say that these data and functions are required for shape to work these data and functions are required for employee class employee to work right that's the origin of object oriented programming in the code so in the real world we could identify anything uniquely identify anything by considering those things as an object 
the same concept is propagated to your code so that you can uniquely identify a piece of data and functions and then programmers will have to explicitly create the object or call the object to be able to use these data and functions and the chances of someone calling it accidentally reduces drastically. This is what object oriented programming is. Now one more thing, I said that any object can be uniquely identified. Okay, How do you uniquely identify an object? There are only two ways to uniquely identify an object, characteristics and behavior. Take any object from this whole universe. These are the only two things using which you can identify an object. So characteristics were generally identified by variables and behavior is identified by functions. For example, let's consider me as an object. My characteristics will be two hand, uh, two legs, two eyes. My behavior will be running, walking or even creating YouTube videos. Anything that changes the characteristics is behavior. So while running, my hands will move, my legs will move. Okay. So what people did is that they tried to imbibe these concepts while writing the code so that each portion of the code can be uniquely identified and accidental calling of other data and functions can be reduced drastically. And this is what object oriented programming. Things like abstraction, polymorphism, reusability and all the things you can think of are byproduct of object oriented programming. These are not object oriented programming. These things were created specifically by compilers or language designers to make sure that when we write object oriented code, it is easy for us to write. It is easy for us to reuse things. Most of these things are meant for reusability. So it's easy to reuse the things. We have to write less amount of code and achieve same amount of functionality, which we would have done without writing object oriented code also. Okay, so I hope and believe that I made it absolutely clear what is object oriented programming and it's absolutely clear for you. In case you have any more confusion, please write in the comment section. Thanks a lot people. Thanks for watching till the next time we meet. Good day. Goodbye. You take care.